In this video, I just want to take one more look at an integral where completing the square is, is going to be useful to let us eventually take the integral. Um, this is an integral where if you try to use u substitution on it, you'd probably try to let u equal everything underneath the root. And if you attempt to do that, you're going to pick up an x in your derivative, and you're not going to get the proper cancellation to occur. If you try to let u equal the entire denominator, then you're going to end up with an even more complex derivative. And there's nothing really up here in the numerator with an x in it that's going to let you get the cancellation that needs to happen actually happen. So we do have a minus x squared in this denominator. And we've seen this formula used a handful of times over the last couple years. The integral of 1 over 1 minus x squared with respect to x is always going to turn into inverse sine of x. And since it's an indefinite integral, of course, you're going to have your constant c tacked onto the end of it. We want to try to get to the point where we can use this. We can't use this unless this radicand looks a lot different than it currently looks. We're going to need to have a 1 in place and then minus one thing being squared as the other part that's underneath the root. Uh, also in the numerator we're going to need to get a 1 in place and that's simple to have happen because the 5 is a constant. You can just factor it out in front of the integral. So I'm going to bring the 5 out in front of the integral and then in the numerator I'm going to have my 1. In my denominator I don't just have one thing being squared here. I have, you know, a difference, and, and then this constant is going to eventually let this one take shape. So I'm concerned about these two pieces. If I can somehow complete the square with these two pieces to create one quantity being squared rather than a difference of two separate things that have <coughs> x's in them, <coughs> I might get to the point where this formula up at the top of the page is actually useful. So I'm going to leave the 6b. I'm going to just switch the order of these around. So I'm going to put the minus x squared first and the plus 5x next. And what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to put something after the 5x that allows me to turn around and factor on the next line as a perfect square trinomial. So <clears throat> I can't use the formula for completing the square, which remember looks like this. If you have x squared plus bx, the thing that you can put here that will always allow you to create a perfect square trinomial that factors to this will be the coefficient of the x divided by 2 and then squared. This formula only works though when there's a positive 1 in front of the x squared. So what we're going to have to do with this radicand is we're going to have to factor a negative 1 out of it. And if you factor a negative 1 out of the radicand, you end up, and, and notice I'm not doing it out of the whole entire radicand. I should have specified that. This is just going to eventually help compose the 1 that we have in this formula. So I'm not really touching the 6, but I'm going to try to put something after the 5x in this blank spot, and actually there's a plus sign there, sorry about that, in this blank spot that creates a perfect square trinomial. And I can't use this formula unless there's a 1 in front of the x squared, so I factor the negative out of the x squared, I'm factoring the negative out of the 5x, and I'm going to leave myself a little bit of space within this quantity so that I can actually complete the square. And what I can put here that will create a perfect square trinomial right here is b, which is negative 5 divided by 2, so negative 5 halves, and then squared. And if you square negative 5 halves, you get a positive 25 fourths. Now you can't just add that in the denominator and get away with it. You're going to have to offset that somehow. So it really does seem like underneath the root in the denominator, we've added a 25 over 4. But keep in mind, that's in a set of parentheses that's being multiplied by negative 1. So what we really put into this denominator was a minus 25 fourths. To offset that, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to add 25 fourths in the denominator. So it doesn't really look like we've done ourselves any favors here, but we are actually a little bit closer to having this take shape as long as we can factor the square we just completed. So I'm going to leave the 5 out here just like it was on the previous line. Have a 1 in the numerator. In the denominator, 
Well, I do have some like terms that I can combine now. I have a 6 and a 25 fourths. Now with the denominator of 4, 6 would be 24 over 4. So if I have 24 over 4 plus 25 over 4, I'm looking at 49 over 4. And then minus, well, rather than this trinomial, I'm going to factor it since I just completed the square on it to that one set of parentheses being squared. And the thing that's going to be in there with the x is going to be b over 2. b is negative 5, so what I'm going to put in here with the x is minus 5 halves. So it, it looks a little closer to what we have up here because now we do have minus one thing being squared, even though it's a little bit more than just an x, a u substitution can, can take care of that for us. But we do have minus one thing being squared in the denominator. We already have our one in the numerator. The last order of business is to turn that into a one so that we've composed this left-hand side of this integral formula completely. So to turn that into a one, I'm gonna have to factor a 49 over four out of it. So I have a five out here already. Underneath the root, I'm going to factor 49 over 4 out of both terms. Factoring it out of the first term gives us the one that we needed. Factoring it out of the second term, now this is going to get kind of goofy because there's not really a coefficient in front of this. If I'm factoring this number out of that term, I'm going to have to divide this term by what I'm taking out of it so that when I distribute, I get back to where I was on this previous line. So. I'm going to have to divide this by 49 over 4. Dividing by 49 over 4 is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, 4 over 49. So I'm just going to do that. So I'm going to multiply by 4, and then I have this in that numerator over 49. 